Hello, in this video I have provided some uh, quick questions and answers on the ruminant abdominal anatomy. This will help you to revise your understanding of uh, the anatomy of uh, the ruminant abdomen. So let's get started. Question 1. Of the four abdominal muscles of uh, the ruminant animal, that is the transverse abdominis, internal abdominal oblique, external abdominal oblique, and rectus abdominis muscle, which one is the most internal? And the answer is, it is the transverse abdominis muscle. So in terms of their arrangements, you have the most external being the external abdominal oblique. Then this is followed by the internal abdominal oblique. And the ventrally there, it is followed by uh, the rectus abdominis. And finally, in most internal, you have the transverse abdominis muscle. So the answer to that question is the transverse abdominis muscle. Question 2. True or false, the external abdominal oblique muscle originates from the tuber coxae. Explain your answer in not more than one sentence. The answer is false. The external abdominal oblique muscle originates from the last eight ribs, while the internal abdominal oblique muscle originates from the tuber coxae. Question 3. True or false, the muscle fibers of the external abdominal oblique muscle are directed chordal ventrally. Answer is true. Indeed, the muscle fibers of the external abdominal oblique muscle are directed chordal ventrally, while those of the internal abdominal oblique muscle are directed cranial ventrally. 4. True or false, in the bovine animal or the ox, the muscle fibers of uh, the external abdominal oblique muscle reach the tuber coxae. You should explain your answer in one sentence. And the answer is false. It is only in small ruminants and specifically the goat where the muscle fibers of the external abdominal oblique muscles reach the tuber coxae. While in the ox, the muscle reaches the tuber coxae via aponeurosis. Question 5. Name the point of insertion for the rectus abdominis muscle in the ruminant animals. And the answer is, this muscle inserts on the prepubic tendon and uh, therefore indirectly to the osseous pubis and the symphysial ligament. So the main structure where it inserts is the prepubic tendon and uh, through the prepubic pre tendon, it indirectly also inserts onto the osseous pubis and the symphysial ligament. Question 6. What is the name of the interval or space which is entirely fibrous that is found between the left and right rectus abdominis muscles? And the answer is, it is the linear alba. And by definition, the linear alba is just a band of white fibrous tissue running on the ventral or the mid-ventral abdominal wall from the base of the sternum to the dorsal part of the pelvis. So the transverse and oblique muscles of the right side and the left side meet at the linear alba. Question 7. Which muscles form the rectus sheath in the ruminant animal? The answer is, it is the internal abdominal oblique, the external abdominal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscles. So you have the two oblique muscles and also the transverse abdominis muscle forming what is known as the rectus sheath. So the rectus abdominis muscle is found tucked in between the aponeurotic fibers of the oblique muscles and the transverse abdominis muscle. So in this way, this is what forms the rectus sheath. Question 8. In paralamba fossa innervation by spinal nerves, the dorsal and ventral branches of uh, spinal nerve T13 pass by the tip of uh, the transverse process of uh, lumbar vertebra number one or L1. So then, spinal nerve L2 passes by the tip of the transverse process of which lumbar vertebra? And the answer is L4. So the spinal nerve T13 will normally pass through the tip of uh, the transverse process of uh, lumbar vertebra number one. Then the spinal nerve of uh, L1 will pass through the tip of the transverse process of uh, lumbar vertebra two or L2. On the other hand, the spinal nerve for L2 will normally not pass through the tip of uh, the transverse process of L3 as expected, but instead it will pass through the tip of the transverse process of L4. 
So if L2 is to be desensitized, one would not target the tip of lumbar vertebra number 3, but instead they would target the tip of lumbar vertebra number 4. Question 9. True or false, the proximal paravertebral nerve block targets the lumbar nerves at the tips of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae, while the distal paravertebral nerve block targets the lumbar nerves as they emerge from the intervertebral foramina? And the answer is false. In fact, it is the opposite. So the proximal paravertebral nerve block targets the lumbar nerves as they emerge from the intervertebral foramina, while the distal paravertebral nerve block targets the nerves at the tips of uh, the transverse processes. Question 10, which is the last question in this video. Which is the preferred paravertebral nerve block in goats and cattle? And the answer is... In goats, the preferred paravertebral nerve block is the distal paravertebral nerve block, while in cattle, it is the proximal paravertebral nerve block. Thank you for watching and uh, listening.